We're preaching to the book of Matthew on Sunday mornings. We are in the 22nd chapter. We are approaching a lot of prophecy in the next few weeks. But first, we need to look at a parable that Jesus Christ gave us concerning God's great invitation. I mean, know today that God is given everyone a great invitation. And this parable is incredible. What a great God we serve. What an awesome God. What a generous God. I know you were standing a little bit ago, but stand again with me. Some of you look a little sleepy. Verse 1 through 14, Matthew chapter 22. You're not sleepy. Well, if you're old, we'll let you get away with it. But you know, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't hoot with the hoot owls all night and fly with the eagles the next morning. Verse 1, if you have in a Bible, we do have the Word of God always lit up. In fact, it is always lit up when you open the book. Verse 1, and Jesus answered and spake unto them again in parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm and another to his merchandise. And the remnant, that is just a few, took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, He was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid them to the marriage." So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. I said both bad and good. Both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. I want to use for a subject God's great invitation. You may be seated. That invitation is fully supplied by the power of God. The invitation comes from a king. Jesus Christ said the kingdom of heaven is like a king that's going to have a great feast and a celebration because his son is going to be married. That great king is a picture of God Almighty, the Father. And that Son is a picture of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In this parable, it says that servants were sent out and they were invited to this great celebration. I want to begin by saying that this is not just any king. This is the King of Kings. This king is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. 
This is the sovereign, almighty God, King Jesus. He sends forth an invitation. And in the time of Christ in this teaching, if you said no to the king, it was off with your head. The king had his way. And if he didn't have his way, you would not have your way. The king was the law of the land. And I don't care what our Supreme Court says in the United States of America, God Almighty is still the law of the land. This king of kings invited, this king invited people to come to a feast. A feast is a place where there's love, laughter, joy. It's a time in which people celebrate. It's a feast. In a marriage in that day, sometimes they would have one week, sometimes two weeks of just the whole two weeks of feasting, celebration. There has been historically some kings that have had feasts that lasted for six months. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of wine, a lot of dizzy heads, a lot of vulgar dancing. But in God's gathering, nothing will be vulgar. All will be holy and pure. So the king invites people to come to his feast. And what they did was in verse 3, they would not. Come. And actually in verse 3, they said, it just says they would not come. They would not come. They were invited, but in verse 3, when he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, they would not come. Now, if you're invited to a kingly celebration, if you're invited to a royal celebration. And you get the invitation. You would show that to your friends and your neighbors. You would show everybody to look at my invitation. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm sharing the invitation with you because it is, it is extended to all of us. But they would not come. I met someone the other day in Walmart, and they hadn't been in church in a while. And they said, oh, preacher, pastor, we've been so busy. We've been so busy. Brother Jerry, have you been busy this week? Sure he has. And here he is in church. Brother Don, you've been busy? Here you are in church. We have so many Dons in this room every Sunday morning. It's the dawning of that great day. <laughs> Don, 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 Don. Yes yes yes. yes, 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 yes. You've been busy, haven't you? Yes. Dale, you've been busy, haven't you? I know your character. You're always doing something. You are a character. You've been busy. Brother Bobby's been busy, but he always hear when he's up to it and can. So when they said to me at Walmart, Pastor, we've been busy, they were trying to say, too busy to be in church, too busy to serve God, too busy, our schedule did not reflect an opening to my Savior. Busy, busy, busy. Someone died and they put on his tombstone, he was busy. Well, he's not now. And one day you will not be busy either. We should not allow things to keep us from listening to God's call. I could ask a number of people in this church that's faithful to the church and Trust me, they're just as busy as you are or more. 
It's not the fact that you're busy. Your heart is somewhere else. Hello. Woo, I'm preaching now. Getting as quiet as a dentist's waiting room. Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll start up the drill. We don't always have our way, but at this feast, they, it just says they would not come. They just would not come. And so they told the servants they were busy. Went, one went to a farm, one went to merchandise. And so he asked him again in verse 4 and 5, the king does, are you sure? Verse 4 and 5, are you really sure that you can't come? Are you really sure that you will not come? Are you really sure? Verse 4 and 5, and again he sent forth his servants saying, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and answered. One went to his farm, one went to his merchandise. He, they made light, light of it. They just wouldn't come. First they wouldn't come, and then they made light of God's orders upon us that one day we will face him in judgment, and we need to be ready in his presence. Amen? We're not always going to have things our way. I heard the story of a boy that someone, his mom and dad named him Odd. That was his name, Odd. He went to school, and all he, hear, all he could hear was Odd. Everywhere he went, it was Odd this and Odd that and What's your name, Odd? He hated that name. But that name followed him around, Odd, Odd, Odd. So he decided when I die, I don't want my name on the tombstone. I just want when I'm born and when I die, just leave my name out of it. And someone was walking through the graveyard and saw that tombstone with born and died, and they said, isn't this odd? <laughs> Come on. The king says, are you sure you will not come? Are you sure that you're too busy? Are you sure that you will not prepare? Are you sure? Because he he began to tell him what he had done. My supper is ready. My fat oxen is, is killed. My fatlings are killed. And everything is ready. You don't even have to bring potato salad or potato chips. Everything's ready. And they kept saying, and there was those, those few people, not many. The Bible says that it was a remnant in verse 6, that took his servants and entreated him spitefully. It's just a few that slew them. It was few that hated the Bible, few that hated the king's command, few that hated the king's servants. Just a few, a remnant, just a small group hated the things of the king. But there was a massive multitude that just would not listen. They were not mean they were not antagonistic. They were not hateful. They just would not go. And not only would they just would not go, they began to make excuses. And they said, I haven't got time. I'm too busy, too busy, too busy to get ready, to prepare. I'm too busy. And God says, are you sure? Are you sure that you can't put my son first in your life? Are you sure that you can't honor my son? Are you sure that you can't listen to my son? Are you sure that you don't need my son? Are you sure that you don't want to be involved in the 
festivities of my son. Are you sure? Everything's ready. I got it all ready. I got, I've got everything you need to have your life blessed and saved. And so the scripture says that he sent out his servants. He was angry, and he said, go into the highways. Go out and find everyone. Gather in the good and the bad so that my house will be full. Bring in the good and the bad. And when you bring them in, good and bad, I'm going to put on them a robe. And I'm going to make them look good. I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to put a robe on the good and the bad. I'm going to clean them up and bring them into my house. I'm going to give them eternal life. I'm going to save their soul. I'm going to touch their lives. Amen. Hello. And here, here is where we get dressed up with praise. On this side of glory. Here is when we get dressed up with God's word. Here is where we get cleaned up. Here is where we get saturated by the Spirit of God. Here is when the Spirit of God is waiting to anoint us. Amen? The king says, I've given you my son. God says, I've given you my son for life. And I've given you my son, and my son shed his blood for your salvation. I've given you my spirit, and the Holy Spirit is awaiting your response. And I want you to know this word of God and the invitation sent out, and God is waiting for your response. Are you going to make light of it? Are you going to say, I cannot come? Are you too busy? Have you got things you've got to do? I know that you're not, you're not the bad crowd. The bad, bad crowd's out burning cars and burning buildings down. The bad crowd wouldn't come in church. They hate church. They'd burn the church down before they come in. The bad crowd will be butchered and slayed and forever tormented in the regions of the damned. But those that will not respond to God's invitation in the end, if they're not clothed in a robe, clothed in garments, they will be cast into outer darkness. And there will be gnashing of teeth. Amen. Come on now. First, this king is the king of kings. Second, when he invited people, they wouldn't come. Third, God says, the king says, are you sure? I've got everything for you. Are you sure? I did it all for you. I sent my son. He brought you my love. I sent my son. He brought me a future. He brought to you a future. I sent my son, and he brought to you the gospel, uh, good news. I sent you my son, and he came to earth, healing the sick, raising the dead, opening blinded eyes, and cleansing the leper. I gave you my son. He proved who I am, and he proved who he is, and he went to the cross of Calvary, and he died, and he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to wash away your sins, to give you eternal life. I sent my son, and and he secured you a place in the feast. He purchased you with his own blood. Don't say no to the blood. Don't say no, I will not come. And don't say you're too busy. And don't make light of it. Amen. If you're going to go to heaven, you must be covered by the king's garment. Say, but I'm good or I'm bad. Whether you're good or bad, you're still going to be covered. You're going to have to be covered with the blood of Christ. You're going to have to be covered with the work and the uh, sacrifice of the Lord and Savior, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. If you're, going to, if you're going to make heaven, you've got to 
endeavor and become part of the kingdom of God. If you're going to make heaven, you've got to be ushered in by the Holy Ghost, by the cleansing power of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be part of the family of God. If you're going to make heaven, you must be clothed in His righteousness, in His power if you're going to go to heaven. I was talking to a guy the other day, and I said, you're going to heaven? He said, I hope so. I said, wrong answer. He said to me, well, no one really knows for sure. I said, I do. I'm so sure that I'm already there because I'm a citizen of heaven. Well, to make a long story short, which preachers cannot do, he thought I was crazy. And they think you're crazy too. Notice a man squeezed into the festivities. He came in without a garment. By the way, the king supplied not only the meal, the seating, the guest, the joy, the festivities. The king also supplied cleansing for his guest. Salvation for his guests made them family. And as they came to the door, he put on them a robe. This king was so rich that he made everybody garments to wear. And God was so rich in the grace of God. My Father in heaven so loved this world that he sent his son Jesus Christ to purchase, to secure a robe of righteousness on my soul so that I can enter into heaven clothed in the shed blood and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But if you're going to go to heaven, you've got to be have the right garments on. Look at verse 10 through 14. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. When the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. He said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? I don't know whether the man said, I don't need it. I'll pass on the garment. I don't want it. And, and the king said, where's your wedding garment? In verse 12, the last four words, he was, and he was speechless. Then said the king, you know what's going to happen to you if you never get saved? You know what's going to happen to you if you never let Jesus Christ pulsate in your soul? You know what's going to happen to you if you don't let Jesus change your life and enter into the throne room of God by the power of God? You know what's going to happen to you? Bind him hand and foot. Take him away. Cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, my God, preacher, why did you say that? Because it's in the book. Yeah. Amen. You say, well, I don't, I'm not used to this kind of preaching. Well, you better get used to the kind of salvation because it's the only kind for you to go to heaven, the blood-washed, resurrected Son of God. Notice in verse 5, or not verse 5, uh, the, the, the fifth point that I have is all are called, but few will be chosen. Notice in verse 13 and 14, then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away. Cast him into outer darkness. That should be weeping and gnashing teeth. For many are called and few are chosen. I'm going to conclude with this. The Bible says many are called. Meaning the Holy Spirit calls many. Today he's calling everyone in this room that's not saved. He's calling you. The invitation is given to you. 
You have the invitation from God. Where many are called. How many are called? Everybody that gets under the sound of God's voice is called. Everyone is called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Everyone is called to this great feast. Everyone is called to forgiveness and peace and joy in their life. Everyone is called to this feast. But few will be chosen. So who will be chosen? Those that answer the call. Those that answer the call. If you want to be chosen, men are called, but few are chosen. If you want to be chosen, then you accept the invitation. You come to Christ. You come to God. If you want to be chosen, I, I, there's preachers who say, well, you've got to be part of the chosen. I'm one of them. How about you? So how do you become one of the chosen? Because you were really good and God elected you before the, before the world began? No, 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 no. I wasn't really good and neither was Jerry. I would have picked on Don, but I'm afraid I'd be whooped. There's so many Dons in the room. By the way, we got a lot of Marys in this room too. I mean, the, the tomb, the empty tomb was sworn with Mary. Mary, 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 Mary. But when we get together, it's the dawning of that day and we're Mary, 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 Mary. Old Scrooge comes in sometimes. But anyway. <laughs> Who you call the Scrooge? Look up here. You. Then we're going to vote you out of church. You didn't vote me in. You can't vote me out. <laughs> I've, told many, many, I've told people over the years, I've pastored this church, oh, I don't know, forever. 30 years. Going on 30, isn't it? I pastored this church going on 30 years. And I've always told them, there's two places you can't go with me in the church. One, you can't go with me behind the pulpit. It's my place. And number two, you can't go with me to the bathroom. Those two places you can't, you can't come. <laughs> come. I used to tell my people... We might change congregations, but we're not changing pastors. One thing, one thing, at the risk of being misunderstood, one thing I know, no one has to go home and get a dictionary to figure out what I said. Amen? So you want to be chosen? You want to be chosen? You're chosen when you listen to God and you come. You're chosen when God puts that robe on you. You're chosen when you come to Jesus Christ. You're chosen. You say, well, I'll just put on Christ and then it'll be good, for, good to go. Let me tell you, as much as I love baptism, baptism don't make you good to go. Jesus Christ makes you good to go. I'm not going to belittle baptism. Be baptism is awesome, and every preacher needs to stop belittling it because it's an important part of our confession. So I'm going to give a short invitation, and while I'm giving this invitation, those that are being baptized can make their way to the dressing room. And I'd like for everybody to stand, and I'm going to give an invitation. I'm going to give you God's invitation. All things are now ready. Come to my marriage feast. I'm going to give you that invitation. You can choose the invitation that God has given you. If you've not chosen that invitation, you need to come. You say, well, I chose it. Well, you need to come. You need to come and confirm your faith and your trust in Christ. Because it's not some ritual that we do. It's we are actually putting on Jesus Christ. We need that garment. And so if you've never answered the invitation, if you've never come to Christ, you've never came to the Lord and put God 
First in your life. You say, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. That's another thing. Busy is no excuse for the king's business. The king's business. When the king calls, you drop whatever you're doing and you come. The king is calling. Altar's open. We're giving invitation.